Hello and welcome to another video from me, this tutor, and today I'm going to be helping you with your source skills and we're going to look through the Battle of the Somme content for the AQA topic of Conflict and Tension, 1894 to 1918. Okay, so as I said, we're going to be looking at the Battle of the Somme and we're going to look at those how useful source skills. It's a question maybe that not everyone's totally confident with, the how useful question, particularly with two sources, like in this paper. Uh, so do recap your knowledge of those great battles, particularly the Battle of the Somme, and then we'll look through those source skills. And if you have my revision guide, obviously you can follow in my revision guide. If you do not, then obviously find out more from me in a minute and have a, have a look at the uh, links in, in this YouTube page to find out more about my revision guides. Uh, but firstly, we're going to have a little recap quiz. So here we are with our quiz. So eight questions to test your factual knowledge. So look back over your notes, help you with this quiz. So just pause me and give us a go to help you with your factual revision. OK, you had enough time, got your ideas. So let's go through the answers. So who was the British military leader at the Battle of Somme? Of course, we should know it's Douglas Haig, General Haig. Um, the Battle of Somme hoped to release pressure on which battle between the French and the Germans, so Verdun. For how many days were the German trenches bombarded before the Battle of Somme took place? So eight days. So I imagine hundreds of thousands of shells being dropped on the, the German trenches. How many casualties did the British Army suffer on the first day? So 60,000 casualties, 20,000 dead. So I hope that clears up. A casualty is injured, wounded, and dead. Okay, and obviously 20,000 of the casualties died. It's the worst day of British military history. So how much land in kilometres take, was taken during the Battle of Somme? So six kilometres over a 25-kilometre front. So not very much. Then a new attacking weapon, Haig used at the Battle of Somme for the first time. So we've got the Mark I tank. There's two successes of the Somme. So obviously you could talk about new technology like the tank. They attempted new tactics like the creeping barrage. They released pressure from Verdun. They obviously led to huge casualties from the Germans as well. The British Army had shown that they were a major force in the war now. They had recruited a huge army. They were no longer 200,000 BF soldiers. They were hundreds and hundreds of thousands of conscripts. And the propaganda, the conscription in Britain was now a success, and they had a huge army. So list two failures of some. Obviously, there were large amounts of casualties, 620,000 for Britain and their allies. Generals showed poor tactics, and it led to the idea of lions led by donkeys. And the military targets were not achieved. They only took six kilometres of land. OK, so they expected to go breaking out into you know, mobile warfare and that never happened. So um, I mentioned earlier about my revision guide. So if you want to use this video most effectively and you want to find more videos, then I'll have a revision guide on lots of different AQA topics. They often have 12 to 15 videos of grade nine answers being explained. And often two or three of those come up in the exam or very, very similar questions. So if you want to be really well prepared for the exam, have a look at my revision guides. No other revision guides have videos like this explaining how to answer questions and example answers in the same way. Uh, so go to the Amazon link and follow that and you can find out more about his vision guides or you can visit my website, find out more about me, one-to-one uh, -one tutoring. Uh, if you want to go through just one uh, small group or one-to-one -one opportunities for exam practice, then get in contact. Okay, but otherwise, lots of free resources here as well that you're obviously welcome to use. Okay, so back to the question then. So often when looking at these questions, I like to you to spend time thinking about what does that question actually mean? Can you work out the exam, uh, example sort of mark scheme, as it were? Can you think about what would be the skills you're being asked by the examiner? Can you identify the important words like how useful or the other command phrases? So what do you think is required in this to make a good answer? Have a look through the wording of the question. What do you think you'll need to do to get 12 marks? So list some ideas then. OK, so over to you. Have a little think about the question. List ideas. All right, got your ideas listed. So here's some ideas you might want to think about. So firstly, um, you've got to make an argument about how useful the source is. So we need to cut, start using that word useful a lot. Valuable is obviously a word we all use as well. How useful is this source? We've got to keep coming back to that phrase and make sure we talk about how useful. So it should be an amount of usefulness. It should be very useful or partly useful. You must discuss the content of the source with evidence or a suggestive meaning. So we need to look at what's in the source and say what we think is useful. We need to explain why what we see in the source is useful as well. With our knowledge, it says use your contextual knowledge in the sort of sub part of the question. Obviously, if we're talking about how useful, we could be talking about useful and not useful. We're talking about both things. 
So you must explain maybe two viewpoints for top marks. Now, that could be a useful bit of content and a not useful bit of content with knowledge. But for the top band, uh, it doesn't suggest this in the wording of the question. But for top band marks, you need to talk about the content of the source and the provenance of the source. And I'll show you the sources in a moment. You should explain ways of provenance is useful and not useful with your knowledge. So it's very easy to say just, you know, the content, the provenance is useful because of this. And that will actually get you some good, good amount of credit. But a little bit of knowledge just to explain your idea would be for the top, top answers. You should conclude your view about how useful the source is overall. And the sources you can use individually with their own paragraphs, as we'll talk about in a moment. OK, so here are the sources. So spend a few minutes then within your revision guide, having a look through them and identifying what you think are the useful bits and the not useful bits. OK, to do that, you might want to think about what is it, what I'm actually learning about the Battle of the Somme. The question says, how useful are they to the historian studying the Battle of the Somme? So what's the message I'm learning from each of these sources? Maybe there's one or two key messages I'm taking out of each one. OK, do they have different ideas? OK, is one saying good things, other one saying bad things? Think about the provenance. Why are they saying different things, perhaps? How useful is the provenance? The provenance is the bit of information next to where it says source B or source C in italics, where it says who wrote it, when they wrote it, why they wrote it. So the provenance is where does the source come from? So spend a few minutes having a look around these sources and listing ideas. If you don't have one on a revision guide, you can just have a look, think about it, jot some ideas down on a piece of paper. Be good to right along with this lesson. Yeah, over to you. Okay, got some ideas. You paused me, had some ideas. So here we are. Let's go on then with some ideas around the sources. So source uh, B. So the provenance is a British source from the third day of the offences, and it is impacted by, obviously, strict censorship controls. It is a newspaper. They are not going to write home and say to the people of Britain, hey, the first day about the song was the worst day in British military history. They're not going to write that uh, because that would be bad for public opinion about the war. So they are heavily censored. OK, the content suggests that there was a large bombardment and some success taking enemy trenches about this Battle of Somme. Yes, there was a large bombardment and there was some successes. And it also suggests um, uh, there was a low casual numbers, but fighting is intense. So it's early to tell. OK, so um, it could be true. They haven't found out the exact figures. But obviously, it's true that it was intense fighting. Um, so you might want to think about some knowledge about this. So, yes, there was an eight-day artillery bombardment. So that is fairly useful and correct. Enemy trenches were difficult to take as the wire was not cut. So there was quite intense fighting. Um, but obviously, it says the casualty figures are low and they don't really know yet. Well, the worst day in British military history suggests otherwise. But they maybe haven't counted the figures yet or been shared with a newspaper yet. So source C then, who's this from? Well, it's from a nurse who is in the front line and she's written after the event. So uh, from her memoirs, so it's later on, it's her memories. So obviously she's not controlled by censorship, so she can be as open and honest as she likes. So also about provenance, uh, obviously she's a nurse. So who comes to see a nurse? People who are injured, okay? Not, you no, know, thousands of safe and well soldiers are not going to come and see the nurse or the doctor necessarily. So she will only experience injuries. And obviously, if thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of soldiers are going over the top in Britain's biggest military campaign ever, obviously, lots of people are going to be injured and she's going to see lots of injuries, okay? So she's only going to see the negatives, isn't she? Um, so the content suggests a lot of casualties as she kept working for 17 hours straight before she had a rest. So lots and lots of casualties. And obviously the knowledge supports that. It was 620,000 casualties, not all seen by this nurse. Uh, huge resistance by uh, Germans with machine guns and artillery to create injuries, of course. And obviously they, the battle wasn't very successful. It took six kilometres in the battle time period. OK, so let's now think about writing our answer now we've thought about the source in detail. So here is a, a, a plan of how we might write out our answer. So first, we, make, we need to make a decision about how useful we think the source is. OK, and we then need to give some evidence about how useful it is and explain with our knowledge that idea. We then might do a furthermore and link to the provenance, perhaps, to explain the usefulness and give a little sort of overall view of the source. OK, so that's what we might do for source B. So let's give this a go. We'll do this together. Now, we remember source B was a newspaper. and It's a little bit censored, so we might not think it's brilliantly reliable. 
Um, so we might want to give a point about that. So uh, you can obviously write along in your vision guides or on your paper, and the task is to really pause. You give an idea, then look what I did, and you can self-assess your ideas as you go along. Okay, so pause and write your opening sentence. How useful do you think it is and why? Okay, so here's what I've gone for. So I've said, source B is only partly useful about the Battle of the Somme because it's heavily centred and lacks an accurate account of the first day of the battle. Okay, so we don't think it's very useful. For example, the provenance source is. Okay, well, that opening sentence led me to provenance rather than content because obviously I've just talked about censorship. So I need to really talk about the provenance first. It wouldn't make sense to talk about the content first in this, in this case, although often candidates talk about the content of the source, the, what's written in it or what they see in it first. Okay, so in this case, I think the censorship mean, means we have to talk about the provenance first. So what do you think we'd pick out for, as evidence of the provenance? So over to you. If you're doing a totally different answer, don't worry, just keep going with your answer and you can keep self-assessing and, and with the ideas that I'm doing. Okay, so over to you, give your answer. Okay, so here's what I've written. So I've said, for example, the provenance of the source is from the Daily Chronicle, the 3rd of July. Okay, so and then I'm going to explain this is not useful because. Now, obviously, uh, you know, I've got, I need to explain a little bit about censorship perhaps, and then I need to explain some of the events as well a little bit here. So I need to get some knowledge into this. Okay, so knowledge and facts are what needed to back up your idea. So have a go now yourself using some knowledge and facts to back up your idea. Okay, got an idea? Ready? So here's what I've gone for. So this is not useful because the British government heavily censored newspapers and the media to give only positive accounts of war. Also, the date of the article is only two days after the first attack to battle, and therefore accurate coverage figures information would not be available by this time. Okay, now, so I've given lots of explanation there about the government and censorship and how they're trying to control public opinion. I could talk about some casualty figures, but possibly I could do that when I talk about the content now. Okay. So furthermore, it's not useful because the source content suggests, okay, so I'll give, give myself an argument and I'm going to explain, okay, with some knowledge, okay? So this, you might well have done a content first. You can give the provenance a go now, okay? Or you might be doing the the the, the content now with me, give it a go and then um, see how you got up. Okay, so pause and give it a go. So here's my idea. So uh, the content suggests that there had been a success on the first day of the battle with low casualties. This is very inaccurate. The British Army suffered their worst day in military history of 60,000 casualties and struggled to take land as the eight-day artillery barrage had not damaged the enemy trenches or cut their barbed wire. Okay, so I can then give a short conclusion to that if I like, or I can do a big conclusion at the end for both, both my sources. Something like, oh, in conclusion, it is not very useful because it is a heavily censored document and does not give me the information I need, okay? Um, so what about the other source? So over to you here, give your argument now, and I'm going to show you an example answer in a sec. What do you think about the nurse's opinion? Can she be a reliable witness? Um, maybe you want to think, you might think about the content first and explain that, then the provenance, or you might think about the provenance first and explain that, and then the content. Uh, try and do both. It's the top mark skills to try and talk about both of them. OK, so pause, spend five or six minutes writing your answer. There you go. OK, so here's my answer. So Saucy is more useful about Battle of Somme because it gives a more accurate account of the death and destruction. For example, the provenance is not controlled by censorship. It is a memoir written after the war by a nurse who experienced the large amounts of death and casualties. This is useful about the Somme because the battle was not a success with only six kilometres of land taken and huge countries, and this source can give a more accurate account as it was not restricted by government controls. So if I think it's very useful, I'm going to do a link to a furthermore. Furthermore, it's useful as the content suggests there were huge amounts of casualties. She had to work 17 hours straight, and this is useful because there were 620,000 British casualties during the war. If you think it's not so useful, you could say, however... Uh, the source content is not so useful as she cannot tell us about battle successes. She can only tell us about the negative because she is in a hospital. There were some success battlefield, for example, 500,000 German casualties. And of course, Haig started experimenting with the tank. You could talk about releasing pressure from Verdun. You could talk about success for attritional tactics. All these things are useful to talk about.
Well, that was a challenging uh, answer to look at, those two heavy sort of written sources. But hopefully you've seen how we can use provenance and content successfully with our how useful source questions. Now, if you're looking for more help like that, obviously, as I said in the video, look at my revision guides, but also I have lots more free videos to look at. So hopefully see you again another time. But otherwise, it's uh, bye bye for now.